This is a conversation between Linus Torvalds, the creator of Linux, and Dirk Kondal from the head of open source program office at Verizon, and they're discussing AI, which it's exciting to get some thoughts from Linus about AI, where it stands, and whether or not he thinks it's going to be crucial to the future of programming and even Linux. I'm excited to go over this one. Let's start. And talk about something else. You cannot possibly give a presentation today, as Jim proved to us, without talking about artificial intelligence and large language models. I, I typically say artificial intelligence is autocorrect on steroids because all a large language model does is it predicts what's the most likely next word that you're going to use and then it extrapolates from there. So not really very intelligent, but obviously the impact that it has on our lives and on the reality we live in is, is significant. And we've all seen that over the last year, how much it has actually changed things for us. Do you think we will see written code that is co submitted to you? As I'm convinced it's going to happen, yes. I mean, and it may well be happening already, maybe on a smaller scale where people really use it more as a help in writing code. Mm -hmm. but it's clearly something where automation has always helped people write code. I mean, yeah. this is not anything new at all. We don't write machine code anymore. We don't even write assembler. And now we're moving on from C to Rust. So I don't see this as something as revolutionary as all the news <laughs> talk is every day about AI. It's not an area I obviously work with. I, I'm still very low level. I, I got into kernels because I love the low level hardware details and that's why I'm still there. But, but so you, you say you expect this can help people write code, this can help people get started. But then if we look at the previous conversation and the, the challenges around code reviews and maintaining, so do you think that large language models will get to the point that they can help us review code, that they can help maintain subsystems? I hope, I hope, because that's certainly one of the areas where, which I see them really being able to shine, to find the obvious stupid bugs. Because, I, I mean, how many people here are actually programmers in this room? A lot. A fair number. A lot of the bugs I write, write. a lot of the bugs I see other people write, they're not like subtle bugs. A lot of them are just the stupid bugs that you did not think about, and you don't need any kind of higher intelligence to find them. But having tools that warn, I mean, we have compilers that warn about the obvious, really obvious ones, but having LLMs that warn about slightly more subtle cases where, where it may just say, this pattern does not look like the regular pattern. Are you sure this is what you mean? And the answer may be, no, that was not at all what I meant. You found an obvious bug. Thank you very much. So uh, I do think that LLMs are going to be a big, you call them disparaging, generally, like autocorrects on steroids. And I actually think that they're way more than that. And how most people work is we all are autocorrects on steroids to some degree. Uh, and I, I see that as a tool that can help us be better at what we do. But I've always been optimistic. The whole hopeful. <laughs> hopeful was the word. Helpful, uh, hopeful and humble. Uh, hopeful and humble, yeah. that's my middle name. But on the other hand, I mean, I have been so optimistic that 32 years ago, I was stupid enough to think that you can write a better kernel than anybody else. <laughs> so <laughs> you have to kind of be a bit, bit too optimistic at times to, to make a difference. So my approach to LLMs really has been that, hey, this is wonderful. This is going to... I love seeing the optimism. Yeah. I don't necessarily share yeah. it. No, a lot of people disagree. But one of the things that I worry about in all this is we see the hallucinations. We see, yeah. and, and that's a technical term for LLMs, they do hallucinate and they do make up stuff. And so the more they are being put into the position where they will automatically do things without an actual human being there to catch them, the yeah. more this becomes scary. Not scary as in they will, they will rule the world and not in the sci-fi sense, but in the so many bugs that will happen and that will affect our lives or our code. And I do understand Dirk's concerns here. Basically, if processes aren't put in place in order to make sure that we're using AI properly, especially in code, it can run rogue, just like anything. And actually a great example is the Linux kernel for this. It's such a large open source project 
that has remained tightly coupled to its processes over the last three decades has been managed well and guardrails have been put in place in order to make sure that we get the best output from our contributors from the open source community. And there's really no difference in AI as well. Of course, there's a potential to have poorly written code that isn't checked by humans, but that's up to us all to really make sure that that doesn't happen. Otherwise, we have a process breakdown. Well, I see the bugs that happen without them every day, so that may be why I'm not so worried. I think we're doing those just fine on our own. And I, I, I don't think I can end the AI topic on a better highlight, so let's go from, from there to, to my next topic I want to talk about, which is... And this ends the portion of the AI conversation from Linus, which I want to spend some time recapping because I, I find it quite fascinating. So we're just going to call this AI in Linux, but because Linus's optimism cannot be understated here. Surprisingly, Linus seems to agree that AI tools will be used for coding and review, if not already being used in such things as large projects like Linux. And these current tools definitely show promise with their ability to integrate and develop code and moreover review that code to make sure that it doesn't have general patterns of mistake, which makes me happy to know that Linux is still open to new technologies, especially when it comes to adding to Linux. And the belief in innovation here is phenomenal. As new tools come out, our ability as people and individuals who can make significant contributions and improvements to existing technologies with the latest and greatest tools, especially in large scale projects, is good to hear from one of the, the founder of such a large scale initiative to bring a kernel to the masses and shows that the belief of optimism itself is a valued trait by Linus. Exploring new possibilities, I really like this thought process. And finally, a belief in individuals. In order to take this all in, there has to be some sort of belief in an optimistic approach to the participation of individuals and the influence technology has over those individuals. We're giving more favor to the individual to actually make the correct decisions, which shows compassion in the ever evolving nature of technology. The belief here is that individuals can make their own decisions on whether or not to use AI, to submit code with AI, or review code with AI. It's a tool at the end of the day, and Linus seems to believe the same sediment. And why keep people away from tools like this? Overall, this conversation really provides you with some of the insight that Linus has over the ever-changing landscape, not only in AI, but in technology. Let me know what you thought about the conversation in the comments section below. Do you agree with Linus's optimism? Are you surprised by the optimism? I'd love to hear from you. Catch me in a great community on Discord, and I'll catch you in another video. Thanks for watching.